I jolted awake to the discordant clanging of the town's bells, a frantic, desperate peeling that sent icy tendrils of dread slithering down my spine. The wounds from my near-fatal encounter with the alpha werewolf throbbed in protest as I hauled myself upright, heart pounding against my ribs like a caged beast. The door to my room burst open, revealing Rendell's haggard, scarred visage. His single eye gleamed with a haunted intensity I had never seen before. Get up, boy, he rasped, his voice like gravel scraped over stone. There's been a slaughter. A cold weight settled in my gut as I reached for my silver-laced blade with trembling fingers. The metallic tang of blood and sweat hung heavy in the air, a grim reminder of the horrors we had already faced. The journey to the farmstead passed in a blur of mist-shrouded fields and eerie, watchful shadows. An unnatural stillness enveloped the countryside, broken only by the mournful keening of crows in the distance. As we crested the final hill, the scene that unfolded before us stole the breath from my lungs. The once vibrant farmland had been transformed into a macabre canvas of crimson and viscera. Mangled bodies littered the blood-soaked earth, their limbs twisted at impossible angles, faces frozen in eternal masks of agony. The coppery scent of spilled lifeblood mingled with the sickly sweet stench of decay, forming a miasma that coated the back of my throat and clung to my skin like oily film. Dear God, Miller choked out, his face ashen beneath his beard. Rendal dismounted, his lips pulled back in a grim line. He stalked through the carnage, his keen gaze darting over the ravaged corpses and churned soil. These wounds, he called back, his voice tight with barely restrained urgency. They're different, larger, more savage. A flicker of movement caught my eye, and I whirled to face it, blade at the ready. A figure stumbled from the shadows of the barn, clothes hanging in tattered strips from its emaciated frame. It was a young girl no more than nineteen. Her once golden hair was matted with gore, her wide blue eyes staring vacantly from sunken sockets. She took a shambling step forward, jaw working soundlessly, before pitching face first onto the blood-slicked ground. I rushed to her side, gently turning her over. A ragged gasp tore from my throat as I beheld the gaping wound where her throat had once been, the flesh savaged down to the gleaming bone. The beast that did this, Rendell intoned grimly, appearing at my shoulder like a specter. It's not like the others. Older, stronger, and far more cunning. He met my gaze, and in the depths of his lone eye, I saw the weight of centuries worth of dark knowledge. The Alpha Prime, Rendell whispered, the words hanging in the air like a death knell. The first of its kind, the progenitor of the werewolf scourge and it's beginning to wake. A guttural howl split the air, a sound of such primal savagery that it seemed to shatter the very fabric of reality. It echoed across the blood-drenched fields, through the skeletal trees, a chilling promise of untold horrors yet to come. As I clutched the lifeless girl to my chest, the iron tang of blood thick on my tongue, I felt a cold certainty settle in my marrow. The nightmare we had endured thus far was merely a prelude, a gentle whisper compared to the roaring tempest that loomed on the horizon. And if we fail to stop the Alpha Prime before it fully roused, then may God have mercy on us all. The sun dipped below the horizon, painting the sky in hues of blood and fire. An unnatural chill crept over the land carried on the back of a fog that rolled in like an inexorable tide. It curled and writhed with a serpentine grace, mist probing the town's abandoned streets and darkened alleyways. I shivered, despite the layers of worn furs wrapped around my battered frame. The wounds from my previous encounter with the werewolves ached dully, a constant reminder of the savagery we faced. Rendell stood at my side, his grizzled features set in a grim mask as he surveyed the encroaching gloom. The essence of the Alpha Prime seeps into the very earth, he rasped, his voice like dry leaves skittering across a tomb. Its malevolence gathers, hungering for the flesh and souls of the living. A shudder rippled through the assembled hunters, 
their eyes wide and haunted in the guttering torchlight. They clutched an assortment of silver-laced weapons, axes, spears, battered rifles, as if they were talismans against the encroaching darkness. We set out into the mist-shrouded streets, footsteps muffled by the clinging tendrils of fog. The houses loomed like silent sentinels, their windows dark and sightless. An oppressive weight settled over the town, a palpable aura of dread that seeped into my bones and coiled around my hammering heart. Whispers drifted on the clammy breeze, sibilant and unsettling. Shadows flickered at the edges of my vision, darting shapes that vanished when I turned to face them. A growing sense of unease prickled at the base of my skull, a primal warning of unseen eyes and lurking horrors. Beside me, Daniel trembled his youthful features pinched with fear. His knuckles whitened on the haft of his silver-chased axe, the blade glinting dully in the spectral light. I placed a reassuring hand on his shoulder, feeling the tension thrumming through his wiry frame. Steady, I murmured, my breath misting in the frigid air. We'll make it through this. A sudden, piercing howl shattered the eerie silence, echoing through the fog-choked streets like the cry of a damned soul. The hunters whirled, weapons at the ready, as dark shapes materialized from the roiling mists. They were werewolves, but not like any we had encountered before. Larger, more heavily muscled, with eyes that glowed a malevolent crimson. Their fur was a midnight black, shot through with veins of pulsing scarlet, and their fangs dripped within blood that sizzled on the cobblestones. The Alpha Prime's elite, Rendell snarled, bringing his ancient rifle to bear. Twisted by its foul power, slay them quickly, before... The werewolves surged forward, their movements a blur of preternatural speed and savage grace. I met the charge with a roar of defiance, my silver blade flashing in a deadly arc. It cleaved through the leading beast's shoulder, the blessed metal searing its unnatural flesh with a hiss of steam. All around me, the hunters fought with the desperate strength of the damned. Silver arrows whistled through the air, finding their marks in slavering jaws and corded thews. Axe blades bit deep, sending sprays of black blood splattering across the fog-shrouded ground. Claws raked and fangs snapped, drawing cries of pain from the beleaguered defenders. The cobblestones grew slick with mingled blood and viscera. Through the chaos and carnage, a flicker of movement caught my eye. A towering figure, cloaked in shadows, lurked at the periphery of the battle. Eyes like burning coals bored into me, ancient and filled with a malevolence that froze the breath in my lungs. The Alpha Prime, in all its terrible glory. Time seemed to slow to a crawl as the beast's gaze locked with mine. In that briefest of moments, I saw the weight of centuries, the countless lives devoured and souls consumed a hunger that could never be sated, an evil that had festered in the darkest recesses of the world since time immemorial. Then, with a flicker of movement, the Alpha Prime vanished, melting back into the writhing fog as if it had never been. The remaining werewolves fell back, their numbers thinned by the hunter's desperate stand. They slunk into the shadows, leaving the town square awash in the coppery tang of spilled blood and the moans of the wounded. I stood amidst the carnage, chest heaving, my blade slick with blood. The faces of the fallen stared back at me, their eyes glazed and sightless. In that moment, I felt the true weight of the burden we bore, the terrible knowledge that our struggle had only just begun. For in the depths of those burning coals, I had glimpsed the Alpha Prime's dark purpose, a hunger that would not be satisfied until the world itself lay cold and lifeless beneath its claws. Dawn crept over the ravaged town like a thief, its pale light revealing the full extent of the night's carnage. Shattered doors hung from rusted hinges, their frames splintered by inhuman strength. The streets were a maze of broken bodies and debris, a testament to the savagery of the werewolves' assault. I picked my way through the devastation, my heart heavy with the weight of the lives lost. 
hollow-eyed survivors huddled in the remnants of their homes, clutching makeshift weapons and trembling with exhaustion and fear. Rendal materialized at my side, his weathered features etched with grim determination. We cannot linger here, he rasped, his gaze sweeping over the shell-shocked populace. The Alpha Prime's power grows with each passing moment. We must seek out the witch's knowledge, and quickly. I nodded, the memory of those burning coals still seared into my mind's eye. The image of the ancient werewolf, cloaked in shadow and malevolence, haunted my every step as we gathered our meager supplies and set out into the fog-shrouded forest. The trees closed in around us, their gnarled branches reaching out like skeletal fingers. The earth beneath our feet was spongy and damp, yielding to each leaden footfall with a sickening squelch. Rendell led the way, his keen eye picking out the faintest traces of a path long overgrown and forgotten. As we pressed deeper into the woods, the air grew heavy and oppressive, weighed down by an unnatural silence. No birdsong graced the twisted boughs, no small creatures scurried through the undergrowth. It was as if the very essence of life had been leached from the land, leaving only a husk of decay and despair. The sun climbed higher in the sky, its watery light filtering through the dense canopy in sickly greenish hues. Sweat beaded on my brow and trickled down my spine, mingling with the grime and blood that caked my skin. Each breath was a labor, the cloying scent of rotting vegetation and stagnant water filling my nostrils. At last, we emerged into a small clearing. In the center, the remnants of a ramshackle hut sagged in on itself, its walls eaten away by time and the elements. Rendal approached cautiously, his rifle at the ready, as I followed close behind. The interior of the hut was a chaos of overturned furniture, shattered crockery, and moldering scrolls. In the corner, a figure lay crumpled and still, its tattered robes splayed out like broken wings. I crouched down, my heart hammering in my chest, and gently turned the body over. The witch's face was a ruin of desiccated flesh stretched tight over jagged bone, her sightless eye sockets staring up at the rotting thatch. In her skeletal hand, she clutched a leather-bound tome, its pages brittle and yellowed with age. Rendell gently prized the book from her grasp, his fingers trembling slightly as he opened it and began to read. His brow furrowed, his lips moving soundlessly as he deciphered the arcane script. I watched. My breath caught in my throat, as a flicker of something akin to hope kindled in his remaining eye. The hunger moon, he whispered, his voice hoarse with reverence and dread. A rare alignment of the celestial bodies, when the barriers between worlds grow thin and the Alpha Prime's power reaches its zenith. He turned to me, the book clutched to his chest like a talisman. The witch's final gift to us, a chance to end this nightmare before it consumes us all. But we must act swiftly, for the hunger moon rises tonight, and with it, the fate of us all hangs in the balance. As if in response to his words, a long, mournful howl echoed through the trees. It was a sound of primal hunger, of ancient evil stirring from its slumber. The werewolves were gathering, called forth by the Alpha Prime's dark power. Rendell rose to his feet his jaw set with grim determination. He strode to the far corner of the hut, where a tattered curtain concealed a small alcove. With a swift tug, he pulled the fabric aside, revealing a hidden cache of weapons. Silver-tipped arrows, gleaming blades etched with arcane runes, and ancient tomes bound in cracked leather. The witch's arsenal, he breathed, running his fingers reverently over the weapons, our last hope against the coming darkness. I felt a flicker of something akin to hope kindle in my own heart as I reached out and took up a silver-chased sword, its weight reassuring in my grip. The odds were stacked against us, the powers we faced ancient and terrible. But with these weapons and the knowledge the witch had left us, perhaps we stood a chance of turning the tide. For the alternative, a world plunged into eternal darkness where the Alpha Prime's hunger reigned supreme was too terrible to contemplate.
The fading light of dusk painted the sky in hues of blood and shadow as we made our way through the twisted depths of the forest. The witch's journal, clutched tightly in Rendell's weathered hands, guided our steps like a macabre compass. Each page was filled with cryptic notes and eerie illustrations, hinting at the location of the Alpha Prime's lair and the horrors that awaited us there. As the last vestiges of daylight slipped away, we found ourselves standing at the mouth of a vast cave system, its jagged entrance yawning like the maw of some primordial beast. The air that wafted from within was thick and fetid, carrying with it the stench of decay and ancient evil. Rendal lit a torch, the flickering light casting eerie shadows across his scarred visage. The den of the Alpha Prime, he intoned, his voice echoing in the stillness. I felt a chill run down my spine as I peered into the inky depths, my grip tightening on the silver-chased sword at my side. The weight of the weapon was a cold comfort against the dread that coiled in my gut like a serpent. We entered the caves, the sound of our footsteps swallowed by the oppressive silence. The walls were slick with moisture, and crusted with strange, phosphorescent fungi that pulsed with a sickly light. As we delved deeper, the tunnel began to widen, revealing a vast network of interconnected chambers that stretched out into the darkness like a maze. And then we saw the bones. They lined the walls and littered the floor, a grotesque tapestry of death and suffering. Skulls leered at us from every angle, their empty sockets seeming to follow our every move. Ribcages and femurs crunched beneath our feet, the sound echoing through the tunnels like the dry rattle of a dying breath. Rendell's face was grim as he surveyed the grisly scene. The remains of the Alpha Prime's victims, he said softly. Spanning back centuries, perhaps even millennia. I shuddered, trying not to think about the countless lives that had been snuffed out in these dank, foul-smelling tunnels. Each skull, each shattered bone, represented a story cut short, a light extinguished by the insatiable hunger of the werewolves. As we pressed deeper into the cave, the air grew thick and cloying, weighed down by an almost palpable sense of malevolence. Strange shadows flickered at the edges of the torchlight, and I could have sworn I heard the faint whisper of voices on the stale breeze, the anguished cries of the damned. Suddenly, a low growl echoed through the tunnels. Rendell whirled, his torch held high, as dark shapes began to detach themselves from the shadows. They were werewolves, their fur matted with grime and dried blood, their eyes glowing with a feral, hungry light. The Alpha Prime's guardians, Rendell snarled, dropping into a battle stance. Prepare yourself, boy. This fight will be like none you've ever faced before. The werewolves charged, their howls reverberating through the bone-strewn chambers like a hellish chorus. I met the first one with a slash of my silver blade, the metal biting deep into its shoulder. The creature shrieked, its flesh sizzling where the blessed metal touched, but it did not fall. Instead, it lunged at me, its fangs bared in a rictus of primal fury. All around us, the clash of silver against fang and claw echoing through the tunnels. Rendell fought like a man possessed, his rifle and blade cutting down werewolf after werewolf. We fought our way deeper into the labyrinth, the bones of the dead crunching beneath our feet. The stench of blood and decay grew stronger with every step, mingling with the acrid tang of the werewolf's musk. My muscles burned with fatigue, my breath coming in ragged gasps, but still I pressed on, driven by a desperate, unyielding desire to see this nightmare end. And then we emerged into a vast chamber, its walls pulsing with an eerie, otherworldly light. In the center of the room, a mound of fleshy, pulsating cocoons rose like a grotesque altar, their surfaces slick and glistening with viscous fluids. Rendell's face went ashen as he beheld the sight. By the gods, he whispered, the Alpha Prime's brood, a new generation of horrors waiting to be unleashed upon the world. I felt a wave of despair wash over me as I realized the true extent of the nightmare we faced. The Alpha Prime was not just a single monster, but a progenitor. 
a twisted creator of an army of darkness.